Buenos dias. Uh, today is Tuesday, and I'm not quite sure what number it is on the March calendar, but I know Easter's coming up. Uh, that means a bunch of people have a little holiday. Well, hopefully a bunch of people have a little holiday. Anyway, I just got back from a little holiday. Me and Mayra were in uh, Belfast for a week, and I reckon... Uh, we enjoyed it a lot. And in fact, I reckon I could live there. It's uh, my kind of town. Mara loved it. I want to go back. East Side, I liked a lot. I liked it all, but I really had a good time. Um, yeah, so I'm back with another song off the new record. Now, this song was uh, a bonus track on... Was it my last release? The last release we did, the singles box set? There might have been something in between there. But anyway, it was uh, just a bonus track on the singles box set. Um, and I kind of thought it deserved more than to just be a bonus track on a CD that was part of a, a singles box set. So, yeah, I wanted to give it more life. Uh, quite proud of this song, I, I, I kind of, I like its feel, I like uh, the hope in it, um, yeah, I really like this song, I mean, not to say that I don't like the songs that I write, but this one, I enjoy playing it, I enjoy listening to it a lot, again, not to say that I don't enjoy playing the others or enjoy listening to the others, but this one has a, a certain place in me, um, Saying that, I've never played it live. I should change that. There you go. That's a plan I'm going to work on. So this is a song um, called Love Over Fear that, like I said, I reckon deserved to be more than just a bonus track. So while in Philadelphia, uh, we re-recorded it. Uh, with St. James and, well, I re-recorded it with St. James and the Apostles in the mighty Green Rock Recorders studio in Philadelphia, above the Green Rock Tavern. Um, yeah, and while I was sort of sitting around with Jeff showing him the structure of the song, I could hear Jamie, who's, who, when I first met Jamie, uh, it's got to be, more than 25 years ago now, he was a bass player, a great bass, well, he still is a great bass player, but he was a bass player in, um, in a band called the 3-4-10s, and um, great band, and used to see Jamie hanging out a lot at the Kyber Hotel in Old City, um, Philadelphia, but yeah, that's where I first met Jamie. Anyway, while me and Jeff were goofing around with the structure of the song, I could hear Jamie fiddling around with the, with the bass and I could hear he had a melody line for the bass. So one of the things I love a lot about the re-recording is, is not just the way Jeff changed the rhythm and the feel of the, of the, of the backing track of the song with the drums, um, but Jamie, the combination of Jamie coming up with this melody line and Mike playing the melody line on bass really gave the chorus a huge lift in the song. And, so they play the melody line under these. Under those chords, which is the intro, but it's also the, the chorus in the song. And I'm going to more than likely fuck this up, but it'll give you an idea of the melody line they come up with with the bass that sits under those chords, and it was something like... Something like that, but obviously played much better than that. But um, yeah, it was Jamie that sort of come up with the idea and then he sort of hummed the idea to Mike later that night and Mike just is a bit of a wizard and just found the line straight away. So 
yeah, like I said, underneath the chords of the chorus, but the song is like... Imagine that great bass line, well, imagine the bass line being much greater than the little demo that I did just before played underneath that chorus. It really lifted up, up the chorus a lot. Um, that, and when I originally recorded the song, I had the idea of sending it to Mike or to Jerry, who played keyboards with me in Australia, to get some Hammond organ on it, and it just never happened before the singles box set was ready to come out. So the song never sort of got the full treatment that I wanted it to have. But um, yeah, again with Jeff playing great drums and uh, Mike playing great organ and, and, and uh, Jill doing great backing vocals. Mixed by Mike Maraconda here in Spain and yeah, I, I really dig it. It's one of the, the ones that when I'm listening through tracks on the record, I, I kind of get to that one and I'm like, ah, yeah, you know, I'm happy with it. I, don't, I wouldn't change it, you know what I mean? And that says a lot for me because I do tend to, I'm guilty of overanalyzing a lot of the recordings that I've done over the last 35 or more years and, and going back and sort of going like, ah, that was a fucking disaster or I did this wrong or you know, we should have did that or we should have rehearsed it more, whatever. But this one I, I listen to and I'm like, no, nah, wouldn't change a thing. Um, so, yeah, it's a good one. Great. It's got a good little middle eight in it. <laughs> seconds I was trying to make this a six minute seven minute one failed again um all right so on next Wednesday what is next Wednesday April the 3rd sometime around there 
Um, the second single off the album comes out, Mr. Fast Gun, written by myself, Carrie Phyllis and Craig Jackson many moons ago, recorded for this album called High Stone in Philadelphia. Um, yeah, so that comes out next Wednesday. Also on next Wednesday is the, the pre-sale for the album will start. Um, uh, the album coming out on Folk Records through Spain and Europe and through Cheer Squad Australia and New Zealand. Um, so the pre-sale will be done. Have I, I'm trying to, trying to remember that I've trying to think that I've remembered everything and probably forgotten most of what I've said. But you know, I'm striving to make them not to not take up too much of your time. That's what I'm trying to do. To give you as much information as I can and not take up too much of your time because we live in this modern world where people become bored so fast because they've got them stupid fucking mobile phones in their hands all the time and your old mate JC is just trying to lessen the load a little bit and not have you with that thing in front of your face if that's how you choose to do your online shenanigans. So, trying to help, but probably not, but think I've remembered everything, but probably haven't. There you go. Enjoy your Easter. I don't give a fuck about religion, and if you like me less because of that, then that's okay, because I don't love you any less if you do believe in some... Jesus dude or some God dude that I don't believe in. I'm still going to love you the same. But I could give two fucks about religion. I think it gets in the way of things and has caused a lot of pain. Why am I giving you my opinions when they're not necessary? Um, and now it's 12 minutes long, the video. Oh, well. Getting back to it. Going to go and cook some... Spaghetti bolognese for my wife. Adios.